Hey, I'm Seth with Land of House. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am here with Chad, who works for Elgin, a company that makes very specific types of intake screens for microhydro systems, such as the one I have right here. We are working with Spencer Langston from Langston Alternative Power, who is the sponsor of my microhydro system here. But today, I'm going to get some more information from Chad about his special intake screens so that we can install one up here on the mountain. Hey, this is Chad with Elgin. Um, I'm here with Seth looking at his uh, microhydro intake and we brought with us a Coanda box. This is our CBS 0.1 box. Uh, this is rated for 1 or 0.1 CFS, uh, which is about 40, 45 gallons a minute. Uh, some of the features of this would be this approach plate here tilted wedge wire so essentially what you're doing is it's a spillway screen that's accelerating the water so this shape this drop of this approach plate gets the right speed of water to cut it using this tilted wedge wire and if you could fill um, in this direction it's kind of like a cheese grater it's at about a seven degree tilt from horizontal um, and then in the other way it's you know smooth so that actually just kind of slices that bottom layer of water uh, this box has a screen and approach plate assembly that bolts into the front. Um, around the back side, it just wraps around and this will basically get pinched against the dam wall or whatever you're mounting it to. I know Seth has a little bit different plans for this, but um, that's the, the features of that assembly. Um, on the side, you have an outlet, integrated sump with an outlet pipe, a pipe stub, 2 inch. Uh, we supply it with a rubber coupling just to make it simple um, in case we run into different pipe sizes and types. And then up here we have some vent holes just to make sure we don't have any airlock inside of that chamber. Most of the time the screen vents itself, uh, but uh, at this point this just introduces a safety there. So to install this, um, you would typically mount this on a, a wall that would be level with the top of these wing walls. The wing walls are set so that you don't get too much water going over your Coanda screen. Uh, you don't want um, too high a water level or too much water going over it because it'll eventually start jumping the screen, which will give you no water at all and defeat the whole purpose. But um, typically people will set this to the height of the surrounding dam and then you essentially just notch out the water to prioritize the Coanda screen to push it all over that. And then once you reach this level, you don't want any more water on this. so then you would engage the rest of the spillway uh, and then life's good. So that's the, the overall features of this. Uh, Seth will be working through the details of how we mount this and retrofit to his system, but that's a, an ideal condition. So what we're gonna do, like the, the screen we saw down the hill, uh, this is a Coanda screen, so it's a spillway screen that uses the energy of the water spilling over an approach plate to hit a tilted wedge wire screen. So. Kind of the same way you're using this screen, where you're using the energy of the water falling. We're going to mount this in a similar fashion. The only change point we're going to have is that we need to have a even spillage of water over the crest of this Coana screen. So what we're going to do is push this out from the wall. And uh, Seth had mentioned about having a local person fabricate a uh, collection box to spill this water into, then to subsequently go over our screen. And then you would output it from the sump inside of this collection box from there. Uh, so as you can see, this uh, is pretty effective, but I think once you see the, uh, the acceleration of the water over the Coanda screen and the cutting action, it'll be a much more efficient and more self-cleaning intake. You know, that right there, that amount of flow coming over is approximately three quarters of an inch, half an inch. And I don't know if that's enough water to fill that tank up. I mean, it's a lot of water. It would just be a challenge to the surrounding walls flush with the dam face to be knocked out. I know you can't cut it. I can't cut it uh, The opposite of that we talked about was building up around it to push to the command screen. In oh a, yeah, that's a tight yeah. clearance, man. Yeah. That's really nice. And so I guess, you know, whatever the flow 
rate is that that eight inch pipe down below the vacuum that that yeah. creates really sp speeds up the amount of water flow going through yeah yeah i just came back to bill's place over in western north carolina with the elgin guys to see how an intake screen could be installed here and uh there have been some updates and changes to bill's place here and i will let bill tell you what has happened so seth what happened last september i had a short in the system and fried a few things and the turbine had a stator problem and it had sort of a bunch of calamities that occurred from mostly from weather lightning debris floods so as you can see there's no turbine in there right now i had to have the other one sent back to spencer and he built me a brand new one so i have it now and i'm kind of waiting for all this flooding and cold weather to get past us before i have to dive in the water again in order to get the thing re-hooked back up but uh, i'm excited to get the thing going and hopefully we, we might end up coming up with a couple of new ways to streamline the, the few problems that are the maintenance issues that i have with keeping the thing going mostly with uh, debris coming down the flow you can see we got a log stuck on the dam right now too so that's an indication of the kind of stuff that just comes floating down and messes up the system a bit but keep our fingers crossed we're going to make it happen and be back online soon so elgin is working with spencer and they have sent me that little unit that we saw earlier in the video and i'll be installing that in a different video at the very top of my hydro system and it will hopefully be able to self-clean and it will really uh, make my system work even better than it has already to this point and so we are uh, basically here at bill's place to see what kind of intake he needs whether it's going to be a floating unit that will continue to siphon over like he had before or if he's also going to use one of those screen boxes mounted to the side of the dam so in the future, I will be coming back out here to his place and we will see what he has come up with. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for future updates on both systems. All right, I'll see you next time.